Hello everyone, I'm the old guy and welcome to my review of Patrician 3. Patrician 3 is a trading, construction, and management game created by developer Azuron and released in 2002. This video will attempt to answer one simple question. Is Patrician 3 worth playing today? The short answer is yes. If you search Google for the best trading video games of all time, I bet Patrician 3 is on or near the top of the list. The best in the genre. Is this true? Is Patrician 3 worthy of the praise? Let's find out. Before we get going, let's take a look at the historical setting of Patrician 3. The game takes place in Northern Europe during the 13th century and you play as a member of the Hanseatic League. The Hanseatic League is a group of towns and traders that agreed to work together to make trading in the area safer for its members. It all started by organizing convoys for protection against pirates and eventually giving its members duty-free treatment and diplomatic privileges. By removing barriers to trade, the League flourished and began building businesses, trading posts and factories, even forming their own armies. The members of the League enjoyed mutual prosperity and political integration. These factors made the Hanseatic League a cohesive economic and political organization. This is the beginning of what would become the European Union and a perfect setting for a trading game. It is also the backdrop of what to expect. Trading, construction and politics will all play a role as you gain recognition in the Hanseatic League. First, let's take a look at the options. The options available in Patrician 3 are surprisingly good, including tutorials, campaign missions and multiplayer features. Remember this game came out in 2002 and it's starting to show its age. First, the multiplayer. It is not as robust as online games today and may take some knowledge of networking to get it running. Also, graphics options are what you expect from a game this old. Low resolutions and not much else. Not great by today's standards, but back in 2002, not bad. Where Patrician 3 shines is in its customization. There are a variety of gameplay settings to choose from, making mechanics easier or more difficult to match your taste. Personally, I like to focus on trading and do not like dealing with pirates, so I turn them to the lowest setting and ignore them for most of the game. Although on harder settings, they will be very disruptive. Turn up the trading difficulty if you want small profit margins, or turn them down and let the profits roll in. Victory conditions can also be customized. Turn them off for an open-ended game, or pick one of the many options and give yourself a goal. The choice is yours. I really enjoy having this much control over a game, and Patrician 3 does not disappoint. Up next is the gameplay. Gameplay is very similar to the Port Royal series, now developed by Calypso. I'll be comparing Patrician 3 to the Port Royal series a lot in this video. Both games are great in my opinion, but it's the difference between the two that highlights why Patrician 3 is the best in its genre. But more on that later. This is a strategy game, and it runs in real time. You can slow the game down or speed it up. Selecting your ship and clicking on a destination is how to sail the seas, and clicking on buildings is how you interact with towns. Looking at maps, studying accounting graphs, and setting prices in the trading window is what this game is all about. This is a strategy game, and the gameplay reflects that. But the depth of the trading mechanics here is unmatched. In Patrician 3, you play as one of the Hanseatic League traders. First, you must pick one of the 12 Hanseatic towns you want to start your career in. Each of the towns has differing sizes, populations, ship facilities, and resources, such as food items, raw materials, consumer goods, and luxury goods. In total, there is 20 resources to trade. Since Patrician 3 is a trading-focused game, picking the starting location and then having an idea of what you want to trade at the start is very important. As you might have guessed, the main game mechanic in Patrician 3 is trading. Port Royal made trading easier by giving you visual clues when to buy and sell, as well as having a much easier pricing structure. Patrician 3, however, gives you no hint on when to buy or sell. You need to figure this out on your own and will probably lose profit doing it, consistently adjusting prices as you go, trying to find that profit margin. This is what I really enjoy about the game. This is what makes Patrician 3 awesome. It does not hold your hand. You need to play the game, get familiar with the resources and start recognizing the right time to buy and sell. In essence, you need to become a trader. The first few times you play, you will probably go bankrupt or find it very difficult to make money. 
This will take time to figure out and may not be for everyone, but once you do, the reward feels great. Making that big sale in Patrician 3 feels earned. On top of manual trading, the automated trade route mechanics in Patrician 3 are very powerful. This is another area where Patrician 3 cannot be beat and gives the game the added depth. Unlike Port Royal, where you can just leave everything on default and the captain will always make money, in Patrician 3 you need to program each step of the trade. Which town to go to, the buy and sell prices, using your warehouse, and ship repair. These are all things you need to think about when creating an automated trade route. I have seen many configurations over the years and some work better than others, but it is up to you on how you want to build a trade route. And once you've found that right mix of supply, price, and location, the rewards are awesome. Seeing a complex trading idea come to life and make huge profits has a level of satisfaction, at least for me, that is rarely beaten. And this is the reason I keep playing. To complement the trading mechanics, there is a city building aspect to the game. You need to construct businesses, housing, schools, banks, churches, and much more. This adds a depth to the towns and gives the player a sense of ownership as the town grows around their prosperity. When developing a town, I feel connected to it and watching it grow is extremely satisfying. All of this trading and construction benefit the towns and the people living in them while making you a profit. Each town is filled with people with needs and wants. In my opinion, this is one of the greatest realizations of a living economy in any video game. Now that's a big claim, but hear me out. Supplying the town with goods improves the quality of life and the population grows. People want houses, jobs, entertainment, and education, and will leave if these demands are not met. You can influence a town's folk by interacting with action buildings, for example, a trading office to store and trade your resources, other buildings such as taverns, town halls, churches, bathhouses, and much more, each play a role in influencing the town's folk. Here you can make a difference, and your choices will affect the lives of the town folk in a positive or even negative way. The town feels alive to me. If you build a lot of ships, the shipyard hires more workers. More people move to the town to fill the gaps, which causes a need for housing. Giving donations to the church to feed the poor will increase the number of beggars in the town. Building wells to keep the streets clean to keep disease away. Donate ships to patrol the harbor to keep it safe for trading ships to dock. Or you can supply a pirate and begin a life of crime in the seedy tavern. All of this will start to affect the economy of the game, and as you grow your trading empire, your profits will also grow. Even after 300 plus hours in the game, it still amazes me how much is going on in each town. It is packed with information that gives the town its depth, and why it is one of the greatest trading sims ever made. As you grow richer, and your trading ships reach distant towns, the townsfolk will start noticing you. Your reputations will grow with your social standings. Starting as a lowly shopkeeper, you'll be promoted to a trader, then a merchant, and up through the ranks. But once you gain the rank of patrician, politics will take a larger role in the game. Now you can interact with royalty, and the prince is very demanding and hard to please. An unhappy prince can be a dangerous foe and can siege the town, pillaging their wealth and burning down businesses. This can severely disrupt your trading and if not careful, bankrupt a well-planned trading company. Becoming the mayor unlocks the military and the town guards, but to get this position, you may have to bribe the councillors for their vote. If you bribe the right people and throw a few well-supplied feasts, you could get voted in. Then the fun part begins. As Lord Mayor, you are responsible for the town's safety. Build up the military, expand the walls, and make sure the prince is happy, because if anything happens, it is on your head. But if you manage your city wisely and prove your worth to the League, you could become the Alderman. Now you are one of the most popular people in Europe. Protect the League's interests, keep the cities in line and punish those that help piracy, or it is your reputation that will suffer. Starting your own town and hunting notorious pirates are both possible with a high enough social standing. Politics in Petition 3 is a great end game mechanic and gives the player a lot to do once their trading routes are up and running. 
but maybe politics is not to your liking and you just want to become a wealthy trader. Joining the guild is essential. You must be a guild member to really be able to function in your town. Even if you just want to sell a ship, you need to join the guild. After paying a hefty fee and becoming a guild member, you have access to important information and mechanics only available to members. Start tracking public convoys, display and discover trading centers, send expeditions into the Mediterranean, and even discover the Americas. Your profits will soar if you come back with your cargo holds full of rare spice from a far off land. These are a few things available to the guild members and can be a lot of fun. It is well worth the joining fee. But not everything in this game is awesome. Now let's get to my least favorite mechanic of Patrician 3, the pirates and sea battles. You can build warships, hire the best sailors, and find ferocious captains. You can arm your ships with the best weapons to fight the pirates or even become a pirate. The choice is yours and it's fun, but when you get to the sea battles, you have two options. First, you can let the computer fight the sea battle for you. Within a few seconds, the computer plays it out behind the scenes and ends with a victory or loss. The other option is to manually control the ships in battle and here's where I, my issues with Patrician 3 start. While I like the idea of controlling the sea battles, the execution is not very good. It's clunky and just not fun. It's hard to control and it takes too long. I turn the pirate difficulty to low and let the computer handle it. Sure, I could probably capture the pirate ships and steal their cargo more efficiently than the computer can, but this is a trading game and I want to build a trading empire. For me, the pirates are like annoying pests. I would rather skip the sea battles. But the option is there. If you like this type of combat, a pirate life may be a great way to experience Patrician 3. The gameplay in Patrician 3 is varied. First, you move through the game starting as a trader and focusing on making money through manual trade, then onto owning a fleet of ships and instructing each captain on how you want them to conduct business. Next, you become a real estate broker as you build housing for the town's growing population. After that, you're constructing businesses, supplying resources to those businesses and taking care of your workers. Then you become the mayor and must deal with the town guard and build up the fences before finally becoming the alderman. Each step adds something new to the game and there's always something new to discover. The progression of the game for me is very interesting and keeps me coming back. Each playthrough has a different focus. Now let's talk about the user interface. The user interface does a pretty good job at relaying the game information to you. It looks good and functions well. It reminds me of an old accountant scroll tattered on the desk of the captain's hold. But what makes it great is its lack of guidance and its complexity. Let me try and explain. In Port Royal, the menus and user interface have hints to make configuration quick and easy to understand. In a glance, you can see if the town is well stocked. Green dots beside a resource means a good price. Click on the slider to buy the resource, simple. The user interface is pointing you in a course of action. You don't even need to look at the price because the user interface tells you it's good. Patrician 3 does not offer guidance or have these time-saving features. The user interface makes you do the work. It is the lack of hand-holding that gives it its depth. It gives the player a blank slate, does not push you in any direction. This promotes the creation of interesting trade route configuration and encourages experimentation with different ideas. Figuring out why your trade route is losing money, poring over your settings and looking for the mistake and fine tuning the pricing is endless fun to me. If you enjoy trading games, I am sure you know what I mean. In Port Royal, the user interface encourages you to leave everything at default, select some towns and off your ship goes. The captain will always make a profit. A successful trade route configured in a few minutes with little thought. Because Precision 3 forces you to do the work, using trial and error to figure out a good configuration makes it the superior game. Sometimes less is more. Up next is graphics. The 2D graphics are very attractive, at least to me. 
There's a certain charm to them, but when compared to some of the titles in the Port Royal series, such as Port Royal 2, which was released in 2004, Patrician 3 graphics are lacking. The game has seasons and weather effects that give it a nice touch, and people walking around add to the scene. Building designs change with different regions on the map for added flavor. Scaffolding indicates that a building is under construction, but all the towns have a random appearance to them. The roads don't make much sense, and the housing can all be clumped together. Also, the map view is a little bland. In Port Royal 2, the map has interesting things to look at and discover. Volcanoes, jungles, mountains, beaches, and interesting structures pepper the landscape. These added touches do not affect the gameplay, but it gives the player something interesting to look at when they're sailing around. Patrician 3 has very little detail like that. It serves a purpose, but I wish they had added a little bit more detail just to make the game pop a little bit more. And now for sound. The sound effects and anime and voices are okay, nothing special. The sound of waves and chirping birds add to the immersion, but it's a hit and miss. Sometimes the mix can be off, some effects are louder than others, and sometimes way too loud. But nothing grinds my nerves however. There's nothing I can really complain about, it's just there. For a strategy game from 2002, it's just okay. Here is an example of the ambient noises to expect in Patrician 3. The music in Patrician 3 is actually pretty good. Each town has a different tune, giving it a certain flavor. I really like some of these songs. They have a medieval feel that fits perfectly in with the game. Here is an example of some of the music from the different towns. And now, my final verdict. At the heart of Patrician 3 is one of the greatest trading games ever made. It allows players the freedom to experiment and does not get in the way. I feel modern games try to simplify the mechanics so much that the game almost plays itself. Patrician 3 doesn't do that. It forces you to learn through trial and error, and in doing so, makes you feel like a real trader. It is you making all the decisions, good and bad. Patrician 3 stays out of the way. Add in all the other aspects of the game such as construction, politics and exploration and you have a masterpiece that no other trading sim comes close to. So, is Patrician 3 worth playing? The game is now 20 plus years old. It is not going to please everyone, but if you are looking for a deep trading sim and are willing to put in the time to master its mechanics, if you can overlook some of the graphical and outdated aspects of the game, then yes, I think it is worth playing. Patrician 3 is the best in its genre. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you soon.